What's going on, fragrance family? Welcome to the Rob Zoe channel. I'm your host, Mark, and welcome to Thursday, where we take a test drive on a fragrance in my collection. Today's test drive is on the house of Frédéric Mal, and this one is simply called Monsieur. Now, with the brand of Frédéric Mal, just like Amouage, at least in my personal experience, is I enjoy the test drive portion of my reviews because it's really the first time on camera where a first impression really isn't enough. Like a lot of these fragrance brands, especially designer brands, um, the introduction is basically uh, everything in the fragrance. And with some of these, you know, you know, there is going to be some malls and, and some amouage fragrances that you get it right off the bat. But you need time with these scents and you can't just go into a store and sniff like 20 malls and go, okay, that's the one I want. Well, at least that's not the way it should be done. Even a test drive isn't enough to fully grasp a Frédéric Mal release, but I'm going to try here with, of course, Monsieur. Monsieur uh, has been known as the patchouli release from the brand, uh, but is it good enough for patchouli lovers out there? We're gonna find out today. I'm gonna give you my take on this one. I remember my first impression on this one and I remember vividly that I smelt it and I was like, this is patchouli all day, every day, but there's more to it than that, kind of. <laughs> it's a lot of patchouli in this. Now, on to our sponsor of the day, FragranceX.com. I wanted to take the time to thank FragranceX and you can get a bottle of this and a lot of Friedrich Mal fragrances on their site. Check out Fragrance as support me by utilizing my coupon code, which is my YouTube handle, robes08, in their coupon section, and you get 15% off your purchase. Not only that, but you help me out, which I certainly appreciate it. Let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at Monsieur. Released it was back in 2016. The nose is Bruno Jovanovic. Major notes to my nose. And Bruno is, dare I say, like he's not as celebrated as let's say a Rapion or a Jean-Claude Elena from um, the Frédéric Mal line. And he is, sometimes in reviews, you're gonna see that he's the less established one. A lot of people like to poo-poo on Bruno's name. Bruno J's an excellent perfumier. So I, I don't doubt that Frédéric Mal choosing him for some releases. Uh, major notes to my nose, uh, patchouli. <laughs> and it's it's a patchouli bomb, 100%. You have to like patchouli. Um, it also has a back end of, it has some incense in here. It has some rum. The notes that are listed for this particular release, you know, as far as the secondary in command, you could go either way. You could go with the tangerine, orange note. Uh, you could go with the rum, the incense, and many others. So you could go either way for secondary notes, like patchouli, 100%. If you don't smell patchouli in this, your nose is broken. But everything else is secondary like if somebody says tangerine is the high secondary note instead instead of the rum i'd be like yeah i get that sometimes um so those are the major notes let's get to sniffing so usually on these test drives i don't give you fun facts about the scent i usually keep those for the whole fragrance review and yeah this is not a fragrance review stop it stop saying it is it's not uh, but let's do some fun facts on Monsieur because I'm probably not going to review this for a few years and it's been a while since I've actually done a full-fledged review on my channel so I don't even know if those are going to be coming back. We'll see. But this scent contains an unusually high concentration of patchouli oil, 50%. Um, fun fact, it is Bruno's favorite note of all time. So I hope so. If you're playing with this, you better really like it, especially at high concentration like this. So it's no surprise that him and Mal decided to do a big booming patchouli. I heard this one was five years in the making with Bruno and Frederick. So a lot of work has been put through that they made sure that they did this correctly. And this, let's put a little asterisk on it. This was the first release after the Estee Lauder purchase of Frédéric Mal, where again, you got a whole bunch, like the Frédéric Mal fanboys were kind of split 50-50. People were saying they released this and they're like, oh, straightforward, big, booming patchouli, they can do better. And then there are the other ones, the purists out there that were just like, you know what? 
there's more to this fragrance than just the big booming patchouli. And this is where I'm gonna get into to play. Again, this is not a full-fledged review. This is just a test drive. So now we got a little bit of the facts out there and a kind of interesting backstory. I like to talk about those in fragrance reviews, not so much on test drives, but it's interesting to get that backstory before we get into what it smells like. But let's let's smell this thing. So it is my scent of the day today. And I got a 50 mil of this. And I remember correctly, like I remember when I bought this, I was like, ah, I just need 50 mil. And you know what? I just need 50 mil and I'm going to spray this little dab, this little thing right here. Cause I think I want to revisit this. Yeah. So <clears throat> Monsieur, Monsieur period. There's a period at the end of Monsieur. So this is Monsieur period, like a big, bold statement. And oh man, immediately, like, I mean, immediately this patchouli based scent tells me this is for the hairy chested man out there that has gold chains. That kind of guy that wears a dress shirt and unbuttons four buttons out of like six buttons. Yeah, that kind of guy. <laughs> the opening of Monsieur lets the user know this is a patchouli based set and there's no apologies to make here. This is big, bold, as an introduction, almost jarring, um, depending on where your nose is within this journey. Uh, we're all at different spectrums in the journey. We've all smelt, you know, you know, there's some people out there that have smelt hundreds of patchoulis and some have only smelt one or two. Um, and that's where the journey comes in. It's all gas on the patchouli, no breaks. And it keeps going strong within the fragrance. It is yours, your primary note and it has continued to be a primary note. Now it does, like I'm saying, no breaks. It does let down on the gas a little bit within the dry down. So you kind of, you're gonna hear this in fragrance reviews sometimes that you have to be patient um, to see what the dry down gives you. This is one of those that it's really strong. Like you really can't start pit, pinpointing certain little things here unless you really try to dissect this one. But depending if you like this introduction or not, don't fear it, it is going to smooth out within the dry down. Now, the opening has a mishmash of dark, earthy, dank patchouli that is paired with a tangerine note. Really like that. The combination really works really well. But the patchouli is so dark that the citrus brightness is like being in a dark room and someone kind of opens a door just to crack to show some light and then slams the door just as quickly. It's still dark in here. So that's where the tangerine note, it almost kind of meshes it runs with the patchouli for a bit in the introduction, but it gave up giving the scent its brightness. It was just like, okay, you win. I'm done. <laughs> I tried. I'm done. So the, the patchouli and tangerine mishmash, it's almost like a really dark orange tangerine like note, which is really interesting, but it's very, I would say on some wearings, it lasts a little bit longer, like it stretches out. And then on some wearings, it's completely lost. Like you'll get a little bit of it and then it's, it's gone. Um, so the tangerine kind of plays games a little bit with wearings, at least for me and my personal, you know, little test drive here. Now going back to the patchouli, it's central. You're not gonna mistake in this scent being like a vetiver based scent or, or a cedar based scent, no. Um, it is a patchouli based scent, that's it. The patchouli here has rough edges. So it's a rougher patchouli. You have some cleaner patchoulis and chocolate, blah, blah, like all kinds of different type of patchoulis. Um, this is on the rougher kind. It has some sharp edges in the opening, but it does smooth out. It gets more airy in the back end and kind of shows the rest of the fragrance. But in this opening, it might just shock your system. It's medicinal. It's dark, dark green as far as the color, almost black, but close. Um, it's earthy. It's highly mentholated, at least to my nose. Um, I feel that camphorous mentholated like glow in this patchouli note in the opening. Very interesting patchouli note. So moving on, yeah, there's a camphorous appeal here and there's woody aspects here in the opening. It's a, it's a gloomy patchouli, if that makes sense. It's almost like you're in a dark, dark forest of patchouli and there's no lights on. Like it's, where's the sun? It's not there. Cold, a gloomy. Uh, the camphorous piece here that I get, it reminds me a hundred percent of I don't know, the closet, grandma's closet. Why, there's like cedar planks in there, little mothballs. That's what it kind of brings me into that. Like there is some patchoulis that do this much stronger than this one. So there is that edge into it, 
but this patchouli is full blown, but at the same time, it doesn't give you that camphorous, woody aspect, full blown. Like I've had more jarring ones, we'll say, than this, but it's a very interesting take. Now the top is not just patchouli, but sometimes it feels that way, and that's okay. There's a good amount of woody aspects here. There's of course that tangerine note that's kind of almost like a rind. Um, there's a quick splash of rum here that works well with the tangerine, um, almost kind of playing together at some points while wearing this. Um, the rum sometimes oversteps the tangerine and it is more of a secondary note than the tangerine. That's why I put it in my top three notes because I was getting more of that than that. But it's not an overly boozy fragrance, so don't think about that. It is all patchouli here. Um, there is some leathery saffron in here, so you have a little bit of that piquant from the saffron, but it also gives out that suede leathery thing going on. And it's gonna be <clears throat> more pronounced in the dry down than the introduction. Now the intro kind of brings me, let's go imagery, brings me to a hippie van, why patchouli always does that. Let's go to the 70s. Um, you have that Incense in the back of the van. Someone's burning some incense. There's a little bit of rum flowing around, but it's not close to you. And there's lots of patchouli, <laughs> lots of green. Um, after this jarring, but also interesting opening, the whole scent opens up. It mellows quite a bit. The jarring part of the patchouli is over now and it pulls back just enough to start sharing the spotlight. As in the opening, it was hard for me to start delving into what the other notes are actually doing. Um, but the other notes now are starting to get more of your attention. You needed to, you really needed to focus to get those subtle hints here and there. The back end of Monsieur shows a little more ambery, vanillic sweetness. So there's an ambery glow in this fragrance from start to finish, but it really was, it was hard to dissect it in the introduction and you can get it more now that the patchouli is kind of taking a step back. It softens the scent a bit and it also gives the, this ambery glow almost gave like a caramel-like hue, but don't think gourmand, please don't. Um, no, not at all. And it's, again, it's part of the, the fragrance, it's not gonna go gourmand at all. People hear caramel, they're like, oh, gourmand, mm, sweet. Um, easy to wear, no, no, not easy to wear this one. Um, so, but does give like a mild, it's more vanillic than caramel hue, but I kind of want to say, it gives you kind of a little bit of that brownness. You lose the tangerine, of course, from the opening, that's gone. The incense, strangely enough, is also lost here in the back end. Like I was getting some smoky incense type feel in the introduction and it was kind of hard. Like the mid is like the sweet point for the incense. You'll lose it in the back end. The woody aspect, they pull themselves up here. So now you're getting more of a woody aspect. The mild leathery touch continues here from the saffron note, which is more of a suede-like uh, leathery tone than anything. Now the patchouli note at this point takes a step back, as I said earlier, but it, you know, you think this is gonna be a powerhouse patchouli through on the whole fragrance, and it turned more airy here, more subtle, but it was strong like an ox, ox up top. I was just, you know, I was like, okay, this is what it's gonna be. It's just going to be patchouli, and let's turn it right up to extreme patchouli. Let's see what happens. Um, it didn't do that. It was almost turned up at the start, like, oh, let's get all this patchouli. And then it started like slowly turn the dial down. Um, that's how this fragrance is built. I recall when this first came out and it was getting hate because, well, Estee Lauder bought Friedrich Mall. <laughs> We, we can't say that those people were kind of wrong. They're just like, oh, that's the end of it. So obviously the first release was going to be basically crap. You know, people always have that idea. When a niche brand gets bought by a huge brand and they may not be wrong. Proof's in the pudding, I guess. Being open-minded isn't all our strong points here in the fragrance community, but I think this one has its fans now. I enjoyed my days of wearing this and getting to know it better. It's a hard wear, even for me, especially in the introduction, um, but you can't just throw this one on and, and just think, okay, this is what it is. Um, I did appreciate that I came into this one thinking it was just a patchouli overdose, which honestly, it is but it's much more than that. And that's where peeling those layers. I, I really like the blend in this release. Like patchouli is like your central. And when I talk about central notes, you know, there's different degrees of like, 
you know, when you're saying like, oh, uh, this is a central note, but it's really just 60% of the fragrance. So this was more like patchouli is like 85% of the fragrance and everything else is kind of melding together to it. Um, but really well done by Bruno J. Now let's get into Seasons Day Night Versatility and Performance Seasons. Um, I really like this and this is, you know, it's kind of start of the fall now. We're in, uh, we're in the end of September, getting into October. Um, I would say spring and fall and winter, of course, because it's big, bold, and kind of dark. But really what I felt is I wore this during a rainy day. And this thing, patchouli always works well in the rain, but this one especially worked well in the rain. So this thing is magic in the rain. Uh, if I had like a top something something fragrances to wear in the rain, this would be on that list. Day or night, I feel like this is better made for nighttime wear. Versatility, well below average. You know, it's been a while since I've actually said that. I've been saying a lot of averages and above average as far as versatility goes. This is one of those that, depending on your nose, your experience and even your wardrobe and where you're gonna go and what you do on a daily basis. This is gonna wear well with a wool jacket, um, herringbone coat, things like that. Um, it just works well with wool and again, texture, right? And kind of thinking of when I would actually wear this. Uh, performance, uh, longevity was good. And again, just because it's big and bold in the introduction, it's like a big patchouli and people are saying, oh, okay, this is gonna be big and huge. No, uh, performance, longevity was seven to nine hours, which is average for a really good scent and projection was above average. So it's not a beast per se, as far as, you know, obviously it does engulf a room in the introduction of it. You give it a couple hours, this thing mellows way down. Um, so it's an above average as far as performance and projection, longevity seven to nine. So it's not a beast mode fragrance, but a very solid performer. You're not going to complain about the performance on this. So my final thoughts on Monsieur. Let's uh, remind me of it. Yeah. Okay, so my final thoughts are this, is, is this a patchouli turned up fragrance? Yeah, yeah it is. People may hate this one because of it, thinking Maul was not creative enough that he just took patchouli as a note, turned it up and called it a day. It was not creative enough by just turning the volume up. Volume up. Okay, you, you got a point. You can, you can have that point and take it. This isn't for the faint of heart and it is for a certain clientele. I personally think so. I don't see too many people gravitating towards Monsieur. I have a hard time picturing a lot of people buying this as this being a top seller for the brand. I might be way off guard and this is a top seller for them. But um, in my opinion, this should not be your first Frédéric Mall sniff, nor should it be your very first patchouli sniff. This is for the hardcore fragrance head. And I think that only then you will appreciate what you are sniffing here. Um, and again, you're not wrong. If this is your first patchouli smell, like sniff, the very first like hardcore patchouli, this is a good good place to start. You'll know what patchouli smells like after this. Um, your very first Frédéric Mal, yeah, you know what? It'll be jarring. Um, a lot of his scents are much more mellow, personally. Um, so it's a, this is a bad place to start. This is like almost one of those. And again, Frederick Malls, if you can take one thing out of this review is that take your time with them. Um, if you're going to a store and you're planning on purchasing a mall, uh, don't sniff them just in store. Get that person to give you samples of every single one and live with these fragrances. Uh, this is my best, uh, uh, unless you have money to spend, then fine, just do whatever you want. Uh, but that's my suggestion out of that. So at the end of the day, first of all, my first final thought, my I'll end this with this, wear this with wool and you'll thank me. This is just, and it just goes hand in hand with wool. And again, you'll have to bring that to the dry cleaner if you're going to, uh, <laughs> you're gonna spray it on the wool, it may stay on that fabric for a long time. That's the only downside, I guess. <laughs> so now I'm done with Monsieur, I'm done, at least for now. It's time for you to hit us up in the comments below. This is a polarizing fragrance, whoever smelt it. Um, I think there's gonna be a lot of different thoughts. And this is the type of fragrance that I, I would expect that. There's gonna be lovers, there's gonna be some that are gonna be like, eh, I liked it, but not bottle worthy, or I'm on the edge, you know, I'm gonna get a couple samples and I'll think about it, or I'm on sample three or four and I still can't decide. I can see that, or I hate this with a passion. To those, hate it with a passion, and I'm not trying to flip you off, um, keep that sample, put it in your sample bucket, don't sell it, just put it in your sample bucket, revisit it. 
trust me um, you may enjoy what you smell six months from now a year from now two years from now um, but I am looking forward to reading these comments because this is a polarizing scent I absolutely love that um, this was a fun test drive gone um, absolutely love doing test drives on Frederic Mal fragrances Amouage and a lot of these higher end brands like this and it's just fun for me and at the end of the day a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression Choose your scent wisely, especially a patchouli-based one. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.